Welcome to Kayak Fishing Works. This is a review of the Vibe Sea Ghost 130. I've had this kayak for over two years and it's been an excellent kayak for me. I'm going to be talking about some modifications, some likes and dislikes, as well as have some on-water footage. First off, I'd like to give a shout out to the folks at Vibe. I think they've done an awesome job with this kayak. And at the price point that it's at, I think it's really hard to beat. When I first ordered it, there was a long waiting list and Vibe went ahead and upgraded the paddle. So I appreciate that. Um, unfortunately, after a year, the paddle had some issues, but their customer service was awesome. And they sent me out a new paddle free of charge. Another shout out to uh, Cowtown Kayaks and Russ Whiteside. He helped me take delivery of it. Uh, super nice guy, so I appreciate his help as well. The Sea Ghost 130 is 13 feet long, 33 inches wide, and weighs 75 pounds. It has both a high and low seating position, and it's a pretty stable kayak. You saw me standing up in it. Also, it paddles well, it tracks straight, and the rudder's great for windy days. Here's a shot of the speed on my graph. So I'm paddling at a pretty comfortable rate. I could maintain this for a quarter or half a mile. However, I am on flat water, not much of a breeze. So it's going to be different if I'm going against a headwind or against current. So up front here, we've got a drain plug, we've got a rigid handle. Um, there's also two more rigid handles on the sides as well as one on the very rear. And this hatch, um, there's a lot of room inside this hole, so having this hatch up here is great. Um, you can get a lot of storage in there if you need to. I've got my accidental modification here. Uh, one day I broke off one of these handles, and then after a while I realized, hey, actually, I like it with the handle, uh, not having the full handle on there, because occasionally that handle would get caught and it would open accidentally. So I went ahead and took the other one off, and I just cut it with the saw. I've had it that way for a year, um, actually, so I, I prefer it that way. So one thing I keep in here, um, it's my light. So when I go night fishing, um, this one works great. It extends out, a little clamp, and I just drop it back in. I've inserted this um, holder in the back. Uh, this light's great. I put an LED one in there. It runs forever. And it's all tied into my uh, fish finder battery that's inside the center console. Um, like I said, this hole has a lot of room inside. Easily store your paddle in there. Sometimes I'll keep a spare. I take your rods. So, there you go. Um, I've had four to five rods uh, in there. Typically, I'll put though a, a sleeve on top of them though, just to protect those guides. The foot braces are nice in that you can adjust their position, but it doesn't affect the rudder steering setup. It has a toe control for the rudder, so your foot pedal stays where you want it, and then you just operate this toe control to move the rudder back and forth. Sometimes I get a little squeaky, so if I'm uh, you know, bass fishing and I have to be a little bit careful, kind of keep greased up. Um, and there is a bit of flex that you do find with them. So um, what I did is I went ahead and I put spray foam inside uh, both inside the hull on both gunnels, and um, that helped uh, stiffen them up so they don't, you know, doesn't press in as much as they used to. Um, anyhow, but you still do get some flex on it. There's a hole right here, so your cable for your transducer can go down. And there's a recessed well to put your, um, your transducer in. You can see the hole where the wire goes down into the transducer well. So if you have traditional sonar or down imaging. It works great for that, keeps it protected. Um, however, I've got a side imaging unit, so I'll show you what I did to um, overcome you know, putting it inside the well because it won't work that way for the side imaging. So I mount it below the kayak. I mounted a block of wood in front of the transducer to help protect it. So after a year and a half and over a hundred days of actual on-water usage, other than some scratches on the transducer, I've had no problems. 
Another option is Burley Pro. They make a cover for the transducer, so you might want to look into that. As far as the, uh, the finder itself, um, this is a Garmin Echo Map 73. So I just made a real easy PVC mount, attached it to the Garmin. This is the Garmin on here, so all this uh, hack together stuff, which I can paint, make it a little bit nicer. But um, And then this is just a little kind of Tupperware tray, two, three bucks from Walmart. So it works nice though for keeping your hooks in, uh, soft plastics, you know, things that your lures you're gonna come back to, possibly you take off before you, you know, put them back in your tackle box. So, um, as far as the console goes, um, it's it's great. So if you're doing B2B and you're going through, you know, waves and you want to cut that inside out so you can store your rods inside and then take them out while you're out on the water, um, it's a great idea for that. For me, I'm mainly doing you know, lake fishing, river fishing. Um, so honestly, I prefer to either A, not have the console at all, or to have it where it was, uh, you know, maybe just cut back here, you know. So this section here wasn't even there, so you had a bigger standing platform. Um, as you've seen, it's, it's a stable kayak, so you can stand up in it, and um, it would just be nice to have a little bit bigger platform. This is the center console cover that comes with the Sea Ghost. There's another version out there called the Mod Pod 2 that you can get from another company, and it actually offers quite a bit of um, additional functionality for that console. Let's talk about this anchor trolley. Um, I went ahead and I think other than the, the rear um, the rear pulley and a couple of these pad eyes, I mean, I, I used all the other uh, inserts that were already there so there's already an insert up front for this uh, paddle strap and you know and and i tied it in with um, these eyelets that are here in these uh, strap holders so works pretty good we loosen it up some here So one of the uh, best hundred bucks I spent um, was this Anchor Wizard. It's the low profile unit. Uh, this thing's been awesome. So having it here on the side, it doesn't really it doesn't really get in the way of the paddling too much. The mounting holes for the Anchor Wizard match up perfectly with the pre-existing attachment points on the Sea Ghost. So if I need to remove it, there's no worries. I just take out the those longer metric bolts that I purchased and put back in the original Sea Ghost bolts. Uh, both the front and the, the rear rail system are nice, they're flush mount. Um, also, they're aluminum, so super sturdy. Uh, I don't really use them for a whole lot, but um, they're there if you want to. Here, so on the seat, um, this is a 2016 model, so um, the front of the seat, I know there have been some complaints because the seat height was a little bit low, people felt, so um, originally I would stick like a piece of PVC pipe in here in the front and it would raise the front up a little bit. Um, but what I went ahead and did eventually though is I built these blocks, they're four inches tall, and um, all they are, there's some Ipe wood, so it's some it's strong wood, you could use something else, however. Um, there's not really any flex on them forwards to back, it's just all compression. So um, all I do to hold them in is I drilled two uh, holes here through this front bar and ran a two and a half inch deck screw, um, two of them in there and it's held up for the past seven, eight months. So um, it works great for my body mechanics. It, uh, it just works for me, so it gets me up a little bit higher. And um, it works in both the low and the high position as well. So, but I typically keep it in the high position. It's a, a bag that I use. Um, got some clips on there, some nippers, and um, hooks, things like that. I keep it here. Anyways, um, it just makes it convenient. I can get get it out of the back of the SUV and then onto the boat really quickly and I've got all my stuff already attached ready to go. Most people find the Vibe Hero seat to be perfectly comfortable the way it comes. However, I've had herniated disc issues in the past so I've added a little bit more uh, lumbar support to it and some padding on the bottom. Uh, this is the, uh, the rudder control to deploy it up and down. Um, 
the one it comes with it has a round hard knob on there which works okay except I just didn't like the fact that every once in a while it'll, it'll you know kind of bounce and, and knock on the side of the boat so when I'm out fishing I want to try to keep it as quiet as I can so I went ahead and I just installed this uh, nylon loop and anyways you pull that cam cleat holds it in place if you want to release it you just pop it up it's uh, there's a spring back in the rudder this is a replacement cleat. I actually upgraded it. It's a, an aluminum one. Um, I can find the link and, and put it in there if you want to get it. I don't know. The ones it comes with are plastic and they worked fine for a little while, but um, after a little bit of fishing, it, it just wouldn't hold the, the line very well, so it just became a pain. Um, but this one, this one works great. I've had no issues with it. So back here we've got an eight-inch hatch. And this, like the front, um, it also it does come with a, a cat bag in there. I'm not sure who turned it a cat bag, but whatever. Um, so I've got a fishing rod holder. I'll drop in there, and which I'll sometimes mount up here on the front rails. So, anyways, this gives you some access if you need to rig some stuff in the back. I don't, I don't really use this hatch a whole lot. Here's a 25 quart Igloo Marine cooler that I attached some rod holders to. Fits perfectly in the tank well. It only costs 20 bucks. I keep all my keep about 360 tackle boxes in here. Um, I, I still have room. You can stick them down here in the sides. Also, a lot of times I'll set them up here on the console as well. So you have a lot of options. But I like this so I can keep them all together, get them in and out when I'm going out to fish. These items, these are for an uh, electric to trolling motor that I have, so I actually strap in a battery box back here, and these little brackets, um, they're for the mount I have. Um, so I'll, I'll do a separate video on that. It's, uh, it's a pretty straightforward, simple system. There's a lot of other great mounts you can get out there as well, um, but this one, something you want to make at home, uh, it doesn't really take much time, and it's actually pretty convenient. So anyhow, that's for another day. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found some good information in it. Please feel free to leave some comments down below. Also, I'm going to be coming out with some other videos. One will be a review on the brand new 2019 Old Town Topwater PDL. So look out for that one. As well as a instructional video on a modified trolling motor system that I think you might find interesting. So I hope you're having a great day and please go spend some time on the water.